was right. I knew he was right as soon as he said it, but I wouldn't listen to him. <laughs> Not me. I want to get a new job now. Some fancy clothes and... Oh. Oh. What's the use of talking? I was about to do the biggest... dumb fool thing in my whole life. Got me a new job, all right. Taking care of some horses for a man who owned a teaming and delivery business here and I saved my money and I bought myself a new brown derby hat and a stand-up collar. Well, I always say, put up a good front and the world is yours, you know? Anyhow, one day, I had about $40 in my pocket. I went into the West House. That's this big hotel where all the dudes was. Uh, give me about uh, three of them 25 cent cigars. Oh. There's always a lot of horsemen and strangers and uh, dressed up people from out of town, you know, hanging around the lobby in a barn, so I mingled amongst them. But there was this, this dude. He had a cane and he had a Windsor tie. Oh, it made me sick to look at it. Oh, I like a man to be a man, you know, and dress up, but not to put on such airs. Well, anyhow, I pushed him aside, a little rough, so he know who I was, you know. had me a drink of whiskey. Well, yes, sir, I had $40 in my pocket. I just says to myself, well, I'll go down to the track, see how old Bert's coming along, because I hadn't seen him for since the day of that ride. You really want to know the truth? Hi, Bert. Hello. How you been? Fine. Gee, I haven't seen you in a mm, long time. You look good. Hey, is that old Bob French over there? Yeah, I guess so. Is he running the horse today? Mm-hmm. Think he's out to win? Hard to say. Uh, you know, when I was uh, swiping a horse, I didn't uh, care much for that, but huh, now I, I'd like to know I had a horse that had a lot of speed, and boy, he could just get out there when you wanted him to. You a betting man now? Ah, uh, nah. You know, just for fun. <laughs> that horse is owned by Mr. Mathers down at Marietta, Ohio. Mr. Mathers? Mm -hmm. I know him, yeah. Yeah, I know you do. He's got all that money. Owns that big swell place up in, uh, down there in the middle of town. Is that the one? Well, you didn't forget everything. <laughs> well, no. Bert, I didn't forget nothing. It's just that I... Well, you know. You want one? I ain't mad at you or nothing, Bert. Yeah, well, you just put some money on this horse. Now you're a betting man. The name is about Ben Ahem. Bob French is going to win it today. Yeah. Now, don't bet a cent on this first heat, because he'll go like an oxen hitched to a plow. <laughs> but uh, when the first heat's over, you just go right down and lay on your pile. <laughs> Bert, you're not going to be mad at me, are you? Mad? Yeah. I'm not mad. I wish you luck. <laughs> Hello. Hello. This is Miss Eleanor Woodbury, my best friend, and my brother Wilbur. Uh, this is... Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't seem to... Well, uh, 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 Mathers. Yeah, uh, Walter Mathers. I'm from Marietta, Ohio. Oh, you're from out of town, too. Yeah. So are we. We just came down for the day to visit Miss Woodbury. Oh, won't you join us, Mr. Mathers? Oh, we have a box in the grandstand. Uh, uh, well, I usually watch the races right from here. See, I told you. People who know what they're doing never go near the grandstands. Here's where you get all the inside information. Isn't that right, Mr... Mathers. Uh, Walter Mathers. Well, do you have a lot of inside information, Mr. Mathers? 
<laughs> well, I guess, I guess you would say a lot of information. Yeah. I'm afraid we don't have any information. In fact, none of us have ever been to the track before. Well, in this next race, uh, there's this horse. Uh, been uh, about been a him. He's a... Uh, well, if I were you folks, I wouldn't put a cent on him in this first heat because he's probably going to run like a oxen hitched to a plow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, after this heat's over, though, I'd get right down there and I'd uh, lay on my pile. I don't know what come over me. I guess it was their swell names and everything got me off my trolley, but I couldn't make her out for a boob, could I? Anyway, first thing I knew, I, I, I was telling all three of them the smashingest lie you ever heard. My father owns that horse. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. He just uh, lets him out to Bob French for racing purposes. See, uh, my family's proud, and uh, they never went into racing in this way with their own name. You know what I mean? And then I went the whole hog. I told them about our place down at Marietta and the big stables and the grand brick house up on the hill overlooking the Ohio River. Well, I, I knew enough not to do it in no bragging way, you understand. What I did was to, to start things off and then let them drag the rest of it out of me. Oh, I told them my father had suspected maybe this Bob French wasn't on the square, you understand, and... Uh, he had sent me down from Sandusky on the sly to find out what I could. Well, anyhow, uh, up come this first heat, and sure enough, this about Ben Ahem, he pulled up in a back stretch like he was a wooden horse or a sick one, anyhow, and he come in to be last. Well, do we bet now? Hey, w would you mind uh, running down and putting this on for me, too? I don't want to go down there, because uh, I figure I don't want Bob... Uh, French to see me. Oh, sure. I want to bet some of my money, too. Well, I wouldn't put on too much, because, uh, this Bob French, he's, uh, you know, I, boy, I wouldn't trust him too much. <laughs> well, if you're going to bet, Walter. Walter. That was a laugh. No, I really mean, what a boob I am. There, there ain't any such guy like Walter, named Walter Mathers, and there never was one. And if there was one, I'd go right down to Marietta tomorrow, and I'd shoot him, because that fool horse won. That just made things worse. Now this Wilbur is inviting me to dinner to, with them all in some little place they knew about by the railroad track with a beach around it and all. And sure enough, there I was, drinking champagne and all. Oh, but to tell you the truth, I don't think I could tell you a thing I ate. I mean, I just didn't taste nothing. And I don't think Lucy did either. We just sat there looking at each other. All I could think about was that train coming to 10 o'clock and it getting later and later and she having to be on it. And I, I, just, I just had to tell her the truth, who I was, before she got in that train. I just wanted to cry. You know, there's a girl, kind of a girl you meet just once in your life, and if you don't get busy and, and, and make some hay while well, you're done for once and for all, it's, you might as well jump off a bridge. Uh, they give you a kind of a look from the inside of them somewhere, and... No, no, it ain't vamping. But what it means is, you want this girl to be your wife, and you want nice things around her, like flowers and swell clothes and all, and you want her to have the kids you're gonna have, and, and you want good music played, and no ragtime. When it happens, it happens all of a sudden. You're just standing there, and you kind of turn to you, 